What's up guys, welcome back to the dungeon today. Uh, I woke up this morning to see uh, what if I can run the 10, 700 funless. I know is a, is a weird thing, especially when the rumors all over the internet are that uh, Intel CPU are power hungry, are super hot. But you know, the best way to find out is to test it. So here we go. The base system is an MSI Z490 Gaming Plus, uh, of course, uh, the i7 10700K, uh, uh, RTX uh, 2080, non DTI version, the normal version from Zotac, and is a very, very quiet one. And uh, the Noctua N12A, in this case, without any fun. And uh, a kit of uh, HyperX Fury that is rated 3200 MHz C18. 1.2 volt so it's a very cheap kit uh, not that tight uh, and i set that at xmp and now i think uh, you are curious to see what happens if uh, we take out the fun and rerun games the gameplay is super smooth as you can see we are at 75 degree 76 okay the ride is not uh, at full but i'm playing funless and the FPS is quite good. We are boosting 3.8, 4.7. And look at the lows. We have 92 FPS, 1% lows. The ride start to getting bigger. I'm still playing perfectly. Funless. And we are still, the ride is growing, we are still uh, having an average of 137 FPS. As you can see, if I rotate, uh, everything is super silky smooth. Total power consumption is 200 watts, 216. Now the GPU is more or less at from zero to 1000 RPM, which is to me is I cannot hear it, especially when playing. The ride now is growing, and we are still above 100 FPS uh, on average. The lows are solid 75 1% lows, 51. FPS 0.1% uh, lows. We have a lot of spell, a lot of people. The ride is almost full now. And still, we are holding. The CPU tempo is below 80. The game is perfectly smooth. I mean, it's hard with a custom loop to maintain this number with a previous generation CPU. Look at this. And look how the game it feels. It's perfect. Nice, so, quality 10, everything on ultra, I just uh, limit the FPS to 144, and now we, have, we are back to 144 sharp. This is set at uh, 144. Oh, it's pretty steady. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have uh, the same situation, more or less, uh, CPU at 80 degrees. The frequency is at base, since I limited uh, the power, but I'm going to show you the trick later. And, uh, well, 80 degrees, more or less, of the CPU. 
today we have a, a nice 26.6 ambient room temperature so uh, i'm not in antarctica if you ask and yes 120 fps uh, very stable even at baseline clock so even for intel the frequency is not everything since uh, to generate 120 fps uh, is not a difficult task and we can do it fanless later i will explain you the trick how to make that possible it's not sorcery but what happened if uh, we unlock uh, the fps so i'm with the uh, vsync now since my capture card the external capture card doesn't allow me to run at 144 as my display can so now we are going to see what happens if we unlock the frame rate so now we have 151 143 so a lot of fps generated even at the base clock look at the middle left of the screen we are at 3.8 gigahertz but i'm still pushing 150 fps 140 let's reset the counter and see very nice average very nice one percent low 0.1 percent lows the temperature is rising of course since now the everything is unleashed but still i'm not catching fire So we are around 85 degrees and 160 fps at baseline clock that is important because if with amd going at 5 gigahertz is not so important neither with intel i as you can see i'm high detail rtx uh, 2080 non-ti and I'm generating more than 150 FPS easily at base clock. The power consumption is for the entire system is at 250 watts for the entire system. And uh, the GPU is at 90% right now. So 2080 RTX uh, at almost 100%. I think is the 90% of the load for the entire system. So. Well, I think I show you enough, but now let's see what happens if I plug the fan to the cooler. Now, when I play, look at the dB meter here. Thirty-five dB is because the fan is barely spinning, and now is the time to show you the trick. As I told you, it's no sorcery. I just limited the turbo boost to fifty watts, so it was basically at the base frequency and sometimes a little boost when the load on the core was very low. So this is a display of efficiency, since uh, as you just saw, you don't need five gigahertz, five point two gigahertz to be able to play at high refresh rate and if you are bothered by power consumption or noise if you think they are still too much which isn't by the way but if you think that you can just uh, turn down the turbo value and you can have a system that can be fanless or almost fanless with uh, a fan that for instance is not spinning right now and you have both uh, low power consumption and almost zero noise so to summarize this quick test uh, of today that is not a review this is just uh, to have some fun while testing something that i had in mind today uh, it's clearly that this cpu is not hot at least it's not as hot as many people believe uh, around the internet and it's not neither power angry since uh, if you want to play with a, a limited fps uh, 144 which is more than enough it can be really power efficient also for the frequency and we saw that uh, you can run it and play your game at maximum refresh at almost zero noise 
As always, I hope I gave you some useful information, at least to, to discuss about this CPU, this architecture, with something that is more practical with data and numbers of real-world scenario. And, uh, well, like always, subscribe if you want to see more, like the video if you like it, and see you in the next one.